Welcome to Andy's How I Did It channel. Today we're going to walk you through how to tap into an existing electrical circuit inside your attic and run that circuit outside so that you can add a flat screen TV to your patio. We do a ton of these How I Did It videos on our channel here, so if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. In the end, I'm going to walk you through step by step. I'm going to put links down in the description for all the materials that you're going to need, and you are going to be able to mount your own outlet and flat screen TV outside on your patio. Let's get started. One of the smartest things that you can do is actually take care of most of this work downstairs before you even head up to the attic. That way you're staying cool. So what you see in front of me, we have two separate work boxes that we're gonna use for this work upstairs. I also have a piece of flex loom that we're gonna use to run to the new circuit. So the first thing we're gonna do here is use this Klein Tools cutter to go ahead and cut the sheath off of the exterior of this flex loom cable. All this tool really does is it just puts a tiny little cut in the shield on the outside of this cable and it allows you to untwist it to get the protective parts off without cutting yourself. So now that we've got that outer shield off, we're going to go ahead and peel this plastic back because we don't need that while we're running the circuit. What you've got left is 12-2 wire. I like to run 12 over 14 in case I ever need to increase the size of the circuit. Of course, the size is wholly dependent on the type of circuit that we're tapping into. I think we're tapping into 14 gauge wire. I like to go up a step just to make sure that I take that extra abundance of caution. So the wire I'm not adding to the circuit is not going to contribute to an over amperage type situation. Now I've stripped the plastic back that was on the outside of the bundle of wire on the inside. I've put it through a 3 8 inch NEMA connector for the knockout connector for the boxes. I've already got one of the holes knocked out so that I I can show you in a second I'll show you how to knock the rest of them out but right now I'm gonna go ahead as I said I'm continuing this pre-work and I'm gonna go ahead and strip off the ends of the wire I'm gonna take off about three quarters of an inch off of the end of each wire that'll give me plenty of room to strap the uh, twist those wires together with the other wires that I'm pulling into the box and put wire nuts on them so now that we've got the cable stripped I'm gonna go ahead and use a screwdriver to knock out the knockout holes for my NM cable connectors that are gonna go on each box I'm going to put two in each box. It's going to allow me to run the existing circuit in on one side, the new cable from one box to the other on the other side, and then connect back up with the existing circuit that I clipped on the other side. I take a screwdriver to knock those knockouts out, and then I take a pair of side cutters to twist, gently twist from the inside those um, knocked out pieces, I think some people call them plug nickels, to twist those out and then pop the connectors in. They just kind of clip right in. So as I was saying, the problem that we have here is that that, like in most addicts, you don't necessarily have a junction box that you can just tap into. So in our case, we've got a circuit that we want to tap into, but if we just clip the cable, it would be too short to put wire nuts on and twist everything back together. So one of the ways to get around that is to have two separate junction boxes that you put in and with a length of cable, like 18 inches to two feet, that you run in between the two junction boxes. That's exactly what you're seeing here. I've got some 12-2 cable. This is just NM, regular old NM cable. I'm prepping these boxes beforehand. I'm going to go ahead and pull it in through the two knockouts and the NM connectors that I put in earlier. My cable's probably a little bit longer than I need, but I'd rather have more room and more flexibility now than to be too short later and have to go back down and get another piece of cable. So I've got it punch through the knockouts. I'm going to go ahead, take a knife. I'm going to cut back the insulation on both of them. I'm going to go ahead and strip down the ends of these and then have them ready inside the box so that when I get up in the attic, I have all my ends stripped down. I've got my new wire run that can go to the new circuit outside. And all I've really got to do is just clip that cable in the middle, mount the two boxes, run the cable from each side into one box and run the cable from the other side into the other box. And then connect those circuits up in one box. I'll have two neutrals and two hots and two grounds to run together. And then the other box, I'll have three neutrals, three grounds and three hots to run together. So now that we've got that sorted out, what we're going to do is we're going to take some extra wire nuts. So we're not going to tie these together yet because we don't have that extra wire from the third circuit to tie in yet. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to take all those wire nuts that we need. We're going to tuck those tight into the boxes. We're going to put the lids onto the boxes so that basically this is just a single carry piece that I can take upstairs with me and I'm ready to just bring the hammer and I'm ready to just clip that wire and get started. I'm going to put the cover on and we're just about ready to go upstairs. First, I'm going to go ahead and locate the power that I need to kill to the circuit that I'm trying to 
tap into. And if we look upstairs and we look in these boxes, this is where the wire is that I'm actually gonna mount the boxes. The first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and mount these boxes to the studs on each side. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get that secured down, this one and the other one. They're just mounted on the ceiling rafters that are on 24 inch center. So that gives me about two feet in between the boxes. In this particular instance, I'm actually running two ethernet cables and the flex loom power cable down through the hole to get to the new circuit that I'm trying to add. You can actually see that hole right there in the center of the frame. This is something that I had pre-drilled from the outside using a very long concrete bit. I think I used um, a three quarter inch bit to go through so that I could run the flex loom and the network cable. The best way to do that is to go ahead and tape it all together and push it down through the hole so that I can grab it on the other end. So you see me fishing it through. I can go down the other side and pull it all the way out. Let's get on with it. This is a big step here. I'm actually clipping the wire that I want to interrupt the circuit of. I cut the wire right in the middle, right in between the two boxes. And I went ahead and I took that wire and I ran it into the inside of the first box. And I've still got, you can still see the piece of wire hanging there. I'm going to run it into the second box. But right now I'm stripping the ends of the wire that I clipped. And after stripping the insulation back, I'm going to go ahead and take some wire nuts and tie those together. Now we've moved on to the other box. So I'm taking the other end of the wire. I'm moving it into this box. I'm going to go ahead and strip it down. I'm going to strip the wires back a little bit so that I can tie them all together. Obviously, in this case, you've got a neutral wire, which is the white wire. You've got a hot wire, which is the black wire. And you've got your ground wire, which is the green wire. And in this case, as in most cases with electricity, you want to take the same color wires. You want to pair them together. When you do twist them together, you want to line them up where they're pretty well even with each other. They're about three quarters of an inch or so outside of the insulation. You want to line them all three in this case up together because I have the third wire that's going out to the circuit. And we line them all up where they're the same length. And then I take a pair of side cutters and grab all three wires and twist them all together so that they all three get twisted. It's very important. You don't want it to wear just one wire is twisted around a stationary wire. You want them all three to bend and hold together. So you're going to take those side cutters. You're going to twist them all three together. Make sure you get a nice solid twist on it. I'm going to take when I'm done with this and clip the head off of it, make it nice and even and take that wire nut and go ahead and put it down. I think one of the most important things that I like to do when I'm wearing these up is I want to make sure that the wire nut can bite into all three wires. So I want all three wires at the end of that junction. So you see me doing the same thing again. I'm taking the neutral settings again this time. I want them all even. I'm twisting them all together. I'm going to take that, clip the end off, and then take the wire nut. And I want it sinking down in all three. You should pull on each give each little wire a tug, make sure that none of them come out and do the same thing with the green here. We're going to line those up, going to twist them together. We're going to clip the end off, even though one of them's not insulated at all. And I'm going to go ahead and use a wire nut to put those together. I don't think you have to use a wire nut. I like to use one as extra precaution. We're going to go ahead, pop this lid on it, tighten the screws down, replace the insulation that I pushed to the side so that we don't have any gaps in the insulation on this. And now we've moved outside. This is where I fished the wire through. In this case, I'm putting in a double gang outlet. There will be an outlet on one side, and then I'm going to have the ethernet over on the other side. It's a very short distance. I decided to use a PVC box for this. This is into concrete, and I have a particular type of concrete screw that I like to use. These wall anchors actually screw in to the concrete, and there's a concrete block behind the stucco there. So I'm going to use these wall anchors. I think they're called Tapcon. Screw those in. It's fairly easy, fairly solid. The box isn't going anywhere. Next, I'm going to take my cutter. I'm going to clip the flex loom right down at the end of the box and then twist off the extra sheet there. I obviously have too much cable here. I only want about six inches or so poking out into the box. I think very important is a little red connector that you slide into the flex loom to make sure that the insulated wire doesn't come back and get cut on the metal housing of the flex loom. So I slide that in. I'm going to go ahead and push that back up into the box as much as possible. Clip the end of the wire off where I have just enough to mount the outlet on it. I'm going to go ahead and strip the ends down after this. And in this case, uh, I am using a ground fault circuit interrupt outlet at GFCI. These are about 15 bucks. Um, this is a 15 amp because of the size wire that we're using. We don't have especially big wire in there running to the circuit. Anyway, 15 amp GFCI. I go ahead and, and take each one of these wires, plug them in the back and tighten the set screws. Then I'll take the wires and fold them down, tuck the outlet back into place. And now we have power outside for our TV and the lanai. And it's safe ground fault circuit interrupt power so that if it gets wet, it trips. 
I'm not gonna cover the low voltage side of the install during this video. Suffice it to say that if you'd like to see more from me on the Cat6 wiring, throw a comment down in the section below. So we're gonna go ahead and mount the two gang weatherproof cover over the box we just added and screw it down tight. And next to mount the TV. Again, if that's something you'd like to see, please throw me a comment below. If you wanna see more content, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.